Sports Fan Network, The Sporting Lockdown, with Dan McLeod and Eddie Reisgarth. All right, it's a Sunday afternoon, Sporting Australia back here. Good evening, welcome. JB, what are you doing up, up so early? You look, you look like you've been, you've been up partying on like a fucking drug addict. Uh, yeah, not for a long time now, but um, yeah, I was actually a little bit ill today, so I was just coming back and relaxing and then... Okay, what's enough? That's a boring story. I want something exciting. Mate, the white guy, what's up? What's up? Uh, still white, I see? Yes, very. Yeah, very, very, he's like, yeah. you're still white today. Yes, I'm very white. I haven't really been outside all week, so it's probably good. contributing to it. I have to express that your whiteness is nothing to be reflected upon by your actual skin colour. It's because you're the whitest person I've ever known oh, yeah, in this world. Yeah. Like, we're quickly, very Five quick questions. What is your favourite musical group of all time? Musical group? Yes. Uh, does Johnny Cash count? That's white. What is your, what is your dream car? Uh, a Mustang? <laughs> Would you rather wear a baseball cap? Should I say a Prius? Would you rather wear a baseball cap or a trucker cap? Me, yeah. I like that. Who wants to lose white hair out? Yeah. 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 You're so white. white, white head out. <laughs> You're so white. That's ridiculously funny. That is how white you are. It's a red scarf. What's up, what's up, my man? You most definitely are not a white man. No. But tell me about your... My mom's white. Your that's, that's, about, that's about it. I want you to I'm tell good. me about you as a black man in the world today. Um, I'm more like a caramel brown. I was, I was waiting for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you like caramel, y'all. Yeah. I'm, I'm a lighter shade of black. You, you're like a, um, yeah, like a to be honest, brown brown. you're like a lighter skinned Denzel. Uh, you know, a lot of people say... Everyone a lighter skinned Denzel. The, the other day, I, I walked into the dairy and he was like, hey, you look like Denzel Washington. I was like... Yeah, Did you, can he accuse you of stealing after that? I don't mean I Denzel <laughs> Washington. I mean Denzel the Somali who cleans upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's this morning lockdown. We've got plenty to talk about. Lots of UFC later on in the sprawl and draw, but it has been a pretty big week in sport in general. Break down, what was your big moment this week at the NBA? Make the white guy. Uh, Anthony Davis is game winner. That's huge. Probably game winner of the season so far, I, I would say. Just mm-hmm. from like seven footer hitting like a fadeaway hitting like threes. Ridiculous. Oh, yeah. shoot, big what, time. What, what, what's the double clutch? Okay, break it down, JV. It's when you, uh, like, the clutch is when you go to fake a shot, so a double clutch is when you. and then shoot. Yeah, it's like, like a fake shot. <laughs> There you go. Oh, okay. It was a it was a bit of a major take that's been talked about as being probably the, the greatest clutch shot of the last decade, and such a like for such a big man, Anthony yeah. Davis is incredible. So, so, so tall guys don't really make no, not three usually. pointers. No, no. Which no. It's starting to develop and now. I, like, I, I follow. Like, yeah, no, no, no. But so, I'm just the little guy is the, the shooter. Yeah. 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 You've got a couple of like really good big guy shooters like Dirk, Chris Bosh, and Kevin Love, but Davis, Davis isn't known as like he's a good mid range shooter, but for him to hit a game winning three is like incredible. See, these days they've got someone called the Stretch Ball, which is a big guy who can shoot from the outside, which yeah. was a rarity up until maybe five to ten years ago. Yeah. But it's something that's starting to become part of the game now. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a major thing, but Anthony Davis, is, for a guy his size, his general all-round game, defensively, offensively, he's a bit of a... He's a bit of a and some people are calling him for MVP, possibly, you know, if the Pelicans can go a bit deep this year. Yeah. yeah. But it'll be... It'll be it's, it's, oh, sorry, go ahead. If they make the playoffs, then he's definitely... But the only problem is it's really hard to give MVP to a non-playoff team. Yeah, exactly. Um, when you were a member of an MVP, who hasn't been in a playoff team? But look who's up against, so LeBron James moved up in the rankings to yeah. second, behind, of course, Steph Curry. And of course, one of the, another one, but another part of the news that came out of the NBA this week is that Steph Curry and Clay Thompson both, both will be entering the three-point competition. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. So like Splash Brothers are going to be right up in there, and that's going to be pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to All-Star Weekend. Uh, I think there's great lineups like across the board. The, the new... Uh, it's the kind of rookie sophomore showcase, how they've I changed like the it, format eh? this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really cool. Kind of gives uh, a few lesser known players a chance to shine. It's pretty all the rookies are injured this year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's, I think there's four rookies out of the squad of, out of, the of like 24 or 20 or yeah. how many it is. So that's kind of sad, but it's also expected because so many like good rookies are out this year. JB, what's your favorite part of All Star Weekend? Um, I don't know. I, I really like the whole of All Star Weekend, but if I had to choose, it's 
For me, it's probably the All Star game itself. That answer right there. Not about the All Star game itself. Then mm. I like all of All Star. That's when you ask someone, "Hey, what type of music you like?" I like all sorts of music. <laughs> yeah. I like I'm in a rock. I'm a fan of, I'm a fan of music. It's I'm a fan of music. I want to get on. I know. And I I like basketball with the game. Um. So you know, All Star is kind of a distraction from that. Yep. So uh, who gets the vote or the All Star players? Yeah. Everyone. The yeah. starting so, lineup. So the the fans. Yeah, the yeah. fans. Vote. Social media. Oh, okay. The the starting lineup is completely fan voted. It's so five on each team. Yeah, and think. then the the reserves, like the bench, is voted by coaches from the league. Oh, so it's like kind of some players. It, some players that might miss out, then get the opportunity to get picked. Yeah. Whether or not it's yeah. because oh, of popularity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. kind of like yeah. the starters are usually the popular players, like your Kobe's, yeah. and, and then the rest yeah. of it is like on merit. And yeah, and yeah. who chooses the coaches? It's just every coach, every coach and assistant coach from the league. They gets a turn. Every, like, everyone oh, gets right, so, yeah. every year gets rotated around. So there's a different coach um, each year. So who gets to choose the cheerleaders? Um, I believe I you and I are on the committee oh, this year. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So we're supposed to be going to um, Point Chev now to go pick them. <laughs> <laughs> For those who don't know, it's the big gay out, and uh, the reason why we're a little bit late today is because JB, JB, JB Sorry, was guys. on one of the floats. So, uh, <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, you can't have a centerpiece. You can't have a festival without a centerpiece. So. <laughs> he did pull off the bikini very well, though. I did with my wow. teeth. So that I, was, and not, and I didn't think when you told me you were going to be a swan. I didn't think so. Yeah. I thought, oh, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm kind of worried that Nate pitches you in a bikini. I'm just worried that well. Nate pitches you at all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so All Star Weekend's coming up, and that is next weekend. So it's a big, and because another big part of it is that it is the halfway point in the NBA season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, so what city is uh, All Star? New, New York. York. New York. Oh, oh Brooklyn. shit. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah. Be some parties with Diddy. Oh, mate, oh, Jay Z. Sure. Jay Z. Jay Z. Yeah, is yeah. he still part owner of the of the of he the, is. Of the yeah. Brooklyn yeah. Nets? Yeah. 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 The, the main oh, owner is trying to sell, but the the Nets like yeah. pretty average this year. Ah, uh, yeah. 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 I think and they're out of the playoffs yeah. at the moment. Nate, what's your favorite part of All-Star Weekend? Um, I'm going to give a really white answer here. <laughs> he's, like, and he's, like, he's like, the accounting. <laughs> <laughs> I like how much economy it brings. Yeah. Yeah. No, honestly, there'll be $3.5 million born into the area over the weekend. I, I honestly, I really enjoy watching the skills challenge, which is like... Yeah. That yeah. is such a white yeah. answer. I was going to say, do the dunk competition no, yeah, that's no, 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 that's the dunk is it, The skills dunk comp is like, like <laughs> all right, pass the ball and job around some yeah. cones. And it's like, like, a, it up a bit it's like if you well. went to a high school like tryout for the basketball team, it's pretty similar to that. It's like you dribble through cones, but you got to pass it to the hoop. Oh, it is good that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of, it's a good all-round skills thing. And I always like it because, and I, I love what they've done this year, is they made it head-to-head, which they announced yesterday. Yeah, yeah you like a bit of head-to-head, don't you? I do. It's great. Oh, so this year I think will probably be the most competitive year ever for that because usually like the first round everyone goes really slow and kind of it's kind of quite chilled out and then in the finals they kind of push for it but this year you're not going to be able to take it slow because you're going up against someone at the same time yeah same time so it's like oh, sudden okay. death yeah pretty much and I think that it's like eight players so there'll be some pretty uh, like interesting matchups as it goes through because there's guys that are better shooters there's guys that are quicker so it should be quite interesting so in the in the skills comp in the skills challenge the Taco Bell skills challenge, um, do you have any memories of any sort of great moments in the skills challenge? I remember when. No, that's right because they never happened. <laughs> when Dwayne Wade missed a layup, that was pretty. Oh cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, actually, actually. So participants this year is Trey Burke from the Utah Jazz, Jimmy Butler from the Chicago Bulls, who's been on a tear like yeah. this season. Like he's playing looking like, like a max player. Well, he's looking like he is going to be a max player yeah, next year. Exactly. Is Derek Rose still playing for the Bulls? Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, bro. Is he not injured? Uh, no, he's not. Yeah, surprise, yeah. surprise. Oh, he's, he's, he's actually playing. His, limit, his minutes are being very limited at the moment. So he's like, his Someone's numbers way down. to be in that team. Well, that's, oh, right, okay. that's right. Although Powell's putting up some really good numbers this year. Yeah. Powell's looking re- rejuvenated all of a sudden. He's had MVP type moments this, this year. This is um, a conversation I've had offline with a friend of mine. Um, shout out to Jamie Valentine. But do you think the Bulls are playing too many minutes? Do I know Jamie Valentine? Oh, I do. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You're gone. The Bulls, because so he's a massive Bulls fan. He is. A, he Jimmy, is. A Jimmy Bulls. Butler. Too many minutes. What does that mean? Jimmy V. Like you know, because the NBA season is long and arduous, and then once you finish the season, you got to get through the playoffs. So, so a lot of the talk is like how the coaches manage the players' oh, manage minutes. The players yeah, yeah. Oh, manage okay. their minutes throughout the year. And the starting, the start, the start, the the Bulls starters are playing a lot. Like a lot. Jimmy Butler's, a I think. Lot. Like I think he's leading the league. I may be wrong on that, but he's pretty close if he's not. Yeah. He's and sort of he's sort of around thirty six minutes, isn't yeah, he? And yeah. And then there's like. The Spurs are traditionally the team that rests their guys the most. Yeah. I don't think anyone's averaging over 30. So, And, you know, like the Bulls, with injury history and, you know, yeah. people getting older, it's, and also, you know, 
the final's going to be Can the tough. Bulls go the stretch in the East? Now, you bear in mind that the East as a, as, a, as, a confer- as a conference is a lot weaker than the other side of the country. Yeah. Yeah. Is the West... Is there the West is... Two conferences? Yeah, so you got the... Uh, yeah. There you go, West and East. West but, and East. But the, the West is mega strong. Like, yeah. Yeah. Un- ridiculously Ridiculous. strong. Yeah. The, the spread of talent across all the teams is huge. But on the East, you've sort of got... Like, okay, prior to the beginning of the season, where the Atlanta Hawks have been a little bit of a surprise. Huge. Yeah. Um, other, other than them... They're doing really well. Yeah, they're, they're, they're leading the league, I think. Yeah, they are. Um, officially now. Yeah, yeah. They're officially leading the they league just now. just bit the uh, Warriors yesterday. Which yeah. was, a, yeah, that was a big game. Huge. So you have a look at the East, though. Prior to the season, there was the... If you had a look at the strong teams, there was the Bulls, there was the Heat... There was uh, Cavs. the Cavs, and that was really about it. Yeah. You were struggling to find a top four pick yeah. from there, and not because there's so many good teams, but because there's so many bad teams yeah. in yeah. the East. And now, But now the Atlanta Hawks are just kicking ass. And Huge. It's, and, and, it's, and the Heat uh, might miss the playoffs. Wow, well, yeah. yeah. Which, which I don't think people would be too surprised if they did miss yeah. the playoffs. I don't think so. I think they picked them to be there or thereabouts, yeah. purely out of... Um, talent pool, even after losing LeBron James. Yeah. But it's looking like they're just going to uh, they're going to miss out, which is going to be yeah. it's, it's going to be sad because a player like Dwayne Wade, who's probably been the, the third best shooting guard in the last decade, hundred um, percent. He's coming towards the end of his career now, you know. Yeah. And uh, different different uh, parallel to Kobe, where Kobe's sort of just been injured and injured and injured and that sort of stuff. Yeah. But I I don't know. I I feel sorry for Dwayne Wade because he's been hampered by little injuries throughout his career, which have hampered what he's been able to do on the court. Oh, yeah. He's missed like. I think consistently he's been playing 60 games a year, which means he's missing 20. In yeah. fairness, though, he gets to like go to bed with Gabriel Union, so that's not so bad. Yeah. <laughs> he, I'm sure. I'm sure. He's, I'm sure he's happy with that, with that, with that end. But he's content. Yeah, yeah, and so I, I feel a bit sick for Dwayne Wade. I feel I feel terrible for the Miami Heat. Um, they certainly um, were the favorite last season. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and I th- four, four years in a row. Really. Choke, choke, choke. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, yeah. yeah, they got two rings, but. It's not not the five, six, seven like rings fi- that they're promising. Shooting fifty, it's like five hundred for yeah. the, for championships. It's not bad. It's not bad, but it's not what they. The sample the, the sample piece is only over four years, and you yeah. consider the players that they brought there. Even though I've never rated Chris Bosh as 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 I I, I never understood the furore about bringing Chris Bosh. Bosh <laughs> the in. raptor, like like oh, <laughs> fucking the ra- he's actually the raptor. Yeah, he, he is. He, he, the, no, seriously, they would finish at halftime. They go into the change rooms. He'd get into like the Raptor suit and come out on the court <laughs> and not wear a mask. Oh. Chris Bosh, come on, Chris Bosh is an ugly motherfucker. He's a weird yeah. looking guy. Yeah, yeah like, like seriously. And that, you know the only reason he gets anything is because he's probably got a massive tool. Okay, <laughs> so looking at the skills challenge, it's, I'm actually looking at the, the the participants this year and it is really strong. So it I, is. So you've got um, Jeff Teague from the Atlanta Hawks, Kyle Lowry, Michael Carter-Williams from the Philadelphia 76ers, Brandon Knight from the Bucks, Isaiah Thomas from the Suns, and one of my favorite players, John Wall from oh, the yeah. Wizards. I think he'd be the favorite for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's I think he's, he's all round pretty strong. Yeah, what about Butler, ball. man? Like you know, his yeah. athleticism is has got to be up there with John Wall. I think Jimmy Butler's by far the like biggest guy in the field. I think he's like six six. Everyone else there's kind of definitely yeah. point guard. Yeah, size. point guard, shooting guard, yeah, sort of size. Right. Yeah, so yeah. it'd be interesting to see how he goes because there's a well, they, um, Carter Williams is six six, isn't he? Carter Williams. Yeah, he is. He, yeah. He, he's very skinny, though. Yeah, so he's yeah. Like, yeah. Because the interesting thing this year is that they've changed is there's a point where they kind of cross over the halves of the course and they've got to do a full length of the court there and back and shoot yeah, a three. Yeah, that's right. And so that's you've kind of really him. looked into the seven shoes. That's his favorite part of the weekend. <laughs> like, he's like, he's like the old, I'm, ah, I'm waiting for the skills challenge. Yeah, <laughs> I want to this year they, they, they're, they're going to roll through tires. I'm all about that bounce pass. I'm all about one hand <laughs> bounce pass. On the road. pass. <laughs> he's like, oh my god, what do you mean Michael Jordan's the best? No, no, no. Uh, I'm, I'm a dish player. I like players who create assists. Yeah. <laughs> that's such a white. That's such a white. You are right. That is the widest yeah. thing you've ever said in regards to the. Basketball. I do wish I am getting stiff. Curry's not in it. Like I'm a huge. Huge Steph Curry fan, like he's doing three point shootout. He'll be an all star game. He's in the all-star game. I would have loved to see he's him. He's an all star starter. Yeah, because he's probably him and John Wall, and I guess uh, Irving's in there as well as the best ball handler in the league. Sure. So that's always yeah. awesome to watch in the skill challenges. How quickly those guys can move. Okay. Hey, um, Itzy, what's up? Ask me what my favorite part of All Star Weekend is. What is your favorite part of the All Star Weekend? <laughs> the favorite part, my favorite part, since everyone else was getting asked, my favorite part of All Star Weekend. Is the celebrity game? Oh, really? Like the celebrity? Isn't Kevin Hart? Kevin Hart, really? Kevin MVP, Hart. two times, two times MVP. MVP. Yeah. Literally, yeah. 
and, and not, Nelly's not deserved. Good. Let's be clear. <laughs> he's not that okay. good. Not that <laughs> and fan <laughs> voted. So yeah. like, oh, it's yeah. 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 hey, you leave fucking Kevin Hart alone. Man. <laughs> Give the you? man a break. How Didn't dare he like you? He was like year? four point. He's like four <laughs> foot seven. You? He is tiny. Leave him alone. Honestly, just Does because he, he he plays basketball with Vern Troyer. Yeah, that's how tall Kevin Hart is. <laughs> and he goes in there in a world of giants, playing celebrities and athletes. He does well. Leave him yeah, alone. He he's alright. He's actually, yeah. he's actually not bad. He's got some skill. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's very entertaining to watch. Any, any other big names? Uh, uh, Common all, was also in there? like all the black, all the nah, black famous there, people. There's a few. Common was in it. He's black, obviously. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, mate. <laughs> Thanks for um, that. Mate. Alan Houston, the old former NBA player, he's in it this year, which will be quite interesting because he was I got Pretty to be legit uh, back in the day. Nick Cannon isn't it this year? Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a disappointment. It's a fucking celebrity game, man. <laughs> what you think? Famous? <laughs> Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon's pretty famous. Nick Cannon's pretty yeah. famous just for having Dude. sex with Mariah Carey. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't yeah. watch Wild now. He's this is Nate the White Guy. He has yeah, never yeah. seen true. true. He's, he's never, like Nick Cannon. <laughs> he's like Nick Cannon. Sounds like I used to watch Wild and Out. That was he's my like, show. I love he's, that. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's like what do you do? MTV. That's a that's a channel that plays all that hibbity hobbity music. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Nicholas White Guys, Cannon? Chris Mullins in it as well. Who? Chris Mullins, former NBA player again. Oh, here we go. Big white guy. Here we go. Michael Rappaport is playing. In oh, it. yeah. Yes. Like, Michael Rappaport. He, was, um, he hasn't been in a movie since, like, 1994. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who that is. You don't know who Michael Rappaport is. No. Yeah, he's, he's, mess- he's, he's a ginger. He's yeah. a tall white ginger Comedian. Guy. You, you would have seen him in, what in does a he few look like? sitcoms. No, no, no. Oh, what was okay. that sitcom that he was in with ki- his kids and... Uh, my, not my wife and kids. That was fucking... That was a black guy. That was... 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 That Everyone loves Raymond? No. <laughs> oh, uh, Always sunny. Jewish shit doesn't count. True. Always sunny? No. Uh, oh, man. That's oh, well. Someone Mike, Google Michael Rappaport right now because you'll know the show as soon as you'll know back to here. We are. Michael Rappaport. There we go. Here is, we go. He this guy. This oh, guy. that guy. That guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a legend. He's yeah. a legend. He's like the Al Pacino oh. of Boston Gingers. He was you in the game him? last year. He was actually decent. Yeah. You see, he's a huge <laughs> Beeble fan. He was decent. Yeah. He he's from New York. You know, he talks like this. Yeah. He, he can shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Fuck you guys. I think me Spike up. Lee's uh, one of the coaches. He actually looks old now. He's going Silver Fox. Spike Lee is coaching the Eastern Conference team. And Spike Lee. Oh, no. And, and Carmelo. And with before? Carmelo. Oh, and awesome. who's. who's uh, oh, hey, bring your son to work day. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. There's like no other famous people in this. Uh, there's like Kristen Ledlow, who's a co-host on like NBA TV. Bollywood star Abhishek Bashan. Oh yeah, there. love him. And then a whole bunch yeah. of WNBA players. And let's be honest, have, has anyone here actually They're watched? Not famous. Have you ever watched a full WNBA game? I watched half of the All-Star game once. That doesn't it was, count. It was literally like an hour of women trying to dunk. It was so do, boring. Do they dunk? Like a, couple of them a few of them can. A few of them can, yeah. yeah okay. It was I was it was I was pretty impressed by the couple that could, but all it was was like they'd dribble up to half court, everyone would get out of the way and someone would try to dunk. It was I, like I just want to make a statement right now. I want to take back what I said. This year I am not looking forward to the celebrity game. Where in the world is freaking where are the NFL Where's players? Bieber? Where's, where's, yeah, Bieber? where's all the other athletes? Where's Chris Brown? <laughs> Bieber, that Yeah, guy. there's been some... There's yeah, Bieber with the left-hand hook shot. It's not the best. Um, Where is Reggie Bush? Reggie Bush, who was a star in the yeah. celebrity game. But he's not so much famous now. He's not with Kim Kardashian. And he's kind of... Crap, and probably. a bit of a cheat, yeah. too, apparently, from, from the college years. So, yeah, anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that back. All-Star game next, next weekend. I'm looking forward, though. The whole All-Star weekend is going to be fantastic. It's going to be excellent. Um, who are you picking to win the East or the West? West. The West? I think, yeah, not even close for me. They don't play any D, though. So yeah, that's uh, true. Win, yeah. And that's the biggest thing. It only really gets competitive in the last, like, quarter. Or even is, like watching last the, is it the Pro Bowl? Is that what they have in the NFL? It's, yeah. a, it's the same thing in the Pro yeah. Bowl? Yeah, yeah, they take it easy in the Pro Bowl the as Pro well. Pro Bowl, you're not even, like, allowed to tackle people properly. No, it's no. It's like they change, yeah. yeah, they make it really soft. Is that actually a rule? Or do you, uh, you know? No, no, it's, it's like, like yeah. They, yeah, they change, like, the rules. Because I think, I don't know if they did it this year, but last year the Pro Bowl was before the Super Bowl. And so there was a huge concern about, like, players getting injured before Super Bowl. So it's like defensive linemen and stuff. It's like you're not allowed to tackle with any of your body weight on anyone. Like, you're allowed to push them over, but you can't, like, land on them. Oh, wow. It's kind of weird. Yeah. 
Oh, sorry about that. I'm, I'm, I, 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 usually, here's what I'm doing. I'm like scrolling down the Wikipedia page of Michael Rappaport because I'm trying to figure out what that TV show was. It was on. I, I it's know. on TV too. It's on TV too. I, 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 it's the one where he always argues with his kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's going to kill me. That's why I have to know what it is because it is absolutely. You're in filmography, uh, so it's not going to be in there. You put, oh, no, I might he doesn't have any. Is it called The War at Home? The War at Home. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Emmy Award winning classic television. Oh, well, he was also on uh, Boston like, Public. Remember that one? He was on yeah. Boston Public or Boston Public? Oh, Boston, uh, Boston, <laughs> Boston Public. Public I think it is. Black he was on <laughs> Boston <laughs> Public. <laughs> when, when, when the power runs out, you have to make up your own TV shows. <laughs> so you just look at the <laughs> We seriously could Boston. actually write. And in, or, or record an entire session of your fob outs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's his fob outs. Coming. Uh, yeah, coming. I'm just trying to get Bust you guys, public. Like, you know, a uh, highlight reel um, at the end of the year. Low light. Awesome. Hey, <laughs> how, how fucking incredible was the Super Bowl this year? It was great. It yeah, really yeah, was yeah. a fucking watch. awesome. And now, now I'm an on and off NFL watcher, okay? So I'll watch yeah. some big games. i watch Super Bowl. I'm not gonna, I don't really follow a team like I used to. I watch a little bit, okay? I was glued to the seat here at the tap room, yeah. watching that 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 the, the drama, the the th- everything about the game was incredible. It definitely delivered. It definitely delivered yeah. right through from the 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 comeback, the Patriots comeback, yeah. to the yeah. to um to the almost Seahawk victory at the end, there, yeah. particularly after uh, Russell Wilson threw that sixty meter drive down, yeah. and 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 the juggle on the ground to set them up to be. A meter out from the from from yeah. the line. That was, I mean, the drama of that Super Bowl was incredible. And I, like I said, I'm not a huge fan. I watch Super Bowl. I get into the, the the hype of it all. But that was probably one of the one of the better Super Bowls I've seen in 15 years of watching them. Yeah, it was pretty good. Actually, I really enjoyed the halftime show as well. Yeah. Katy who, Perry. who wore best, Katy Perry or Bam Bam Bigelow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's been some pretty crazy memes. Yeah, 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 and the yeah, shark yeah. as well. And who brings out Missy Elliott? What's m- yeah, that when, was... I when the hell is she relevant? Whoopi Goldberg. Are you kidding me? Racist. No, wh- wh- <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Like, the white guy, you're, you're racist. Leave, <laughs> leave Whoopi alone. She's a national treasure. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, the half-time time was good, but the, the match in itself... Because I guess I'm one of those social watchers that watches the, yeah. the NFL to wa- or the Super Bowl to watch the halftime performance. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I suppose I made it a little bit better. I was able to sit down here and drink some Coors Light, yeah. sit with real Americans too, and also, you know, work, work out, you know, what's what. And, you know, they were filling me in about the different um, Super Bowl commercials and that sort of thing. Yeah. But the game itself, I was, I was, I was, I was absolutely glued to my television because of the game, not because of anything else that was happening around it, not because of the coaches or the personalities. Like not even th- I wasn't I wasn't even in it for Tom Brady I was in it because it was fucking incredible. It was actually yeah. a good game. Yeah. It was kind of. When- oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I think when you're a casual fan, you actually do have the freedom to just enjoy the game on face value rather than buying into particular personalities. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. sure. It's, it's one of the games where you don't have to know what's happening necessarily. You don't have to yeah. follow the teams. You don't have to know who's playing. Yeah. You just watch a great game of like it was kind of what last year's game. I wanted last year's game to be because last yep. year was like best offense versus best defense. Yeah. And this year it was like legendary quarterback versus best defense. Yeah. So Did Tom Brady kind of, deserve to be the MVP though? Quarterback always gets it. So it's kind of like... It kind of cements his legacy. It, has, yeah. it, it, it had to go to him. But had, had, Marshawn, had Marshawn Lynch scored the winning touchdown though, he should have wouldn't, Russell yeah. Wilson wouldn't have been the MVP. Marshawn Lynch would have been yeah. the MVP. You know? It's, it's really cool. who makes the, big, the big, biggest plays. Who's, yeah. taken, who's taken responsibility for calling that play? Has anyone? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Someone, Not that I've known of. I don't know if anyone will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't be like, yeah, that was me. Sorry, guys. I t- I, 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 you look at it, though, and yet again, from a, casual, from a casual fan's perspective, and if you watch it, how incredible was it, though? If he misses, he goes for the intercept. He can only go for the intercept. Yeah. If he takes the intercept, they score, he, you know, we, we end up with the same result. Yeah. If he misses the intercept, we're talking about rookie player with a big-time Super Bowl player. Yeah. If he doesn't take it, they score the touchdown, they win the Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. That is how big of a decision he made and the play that he did. It was huge. It was a huge moment. And um, the, just, it was like everyone was stunned. It, yeah. It reminds me of the David Tyree catch from, yeah. what was that, th- three, four years ago now? Yeah. It's yeah. like such a huge thing in terms of not just individual play, it was, a, it was an awesome individual play out of context, but like to do it when he did it. As a rookie, like 
if they had run, they probably would have scored. Obviously, that's a big thing to talk about as well. But like, yeah, sure. it's just huge. Like, I, I watched a doco breakdown yesterday on um, ESPN of, of the last five minutes of the Super Bowl because all the players were mic'd up, obviously. Yeah. So Russell Wilson was mic'd up. The coaches were mic'd up. Um, Tom Brady was mic'd up. Marshawn Lynch was was mic was mic'd up. What's that idiot from the Seahawks? Um, Freaking, who, who who had gave the after game speech last year? Got interviewed by ESPN uh, or by NBC? Sorry, no idea. Oh, uh, anyway, anyway. <laughs> so they've got they've got all these guys mic'd up, and just the drama of what was happening and all that yeah. sort of shit. It was uh, honestly, you got to feel for a guy like Russell Wilson, but he th- he throws it, and you know, and this is what you notice. You notice these guys. There's no breakdown or anything. He's like, ah. Oh. Oh, well, turn around, go yeah. back, and all that sort of stuff, you know. And Tom Brady, and, and who would have thought Tom, the champion Tom Brady jumping up and down and celebrating the yeah. way that he did? Like, that just shows how much a title means even to guys like Brady who had run, won three previous um, Super Bowls yeah. before that. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, for me, that was a really big game. And as a casual fan, I think you're probably going to find it's going to tie in a lot of um, – um, new fans, I think. I think that's the type of game which is going to bring yeah. a lot of new fans. For me, I tell you what, I'm in a position now where I'm like, hey, I might start watching on the regular again next season. Yeah. yeah. Considering it's not like you have to watch 81 <laughs> games. <laughs> no, 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 you know, no. like, and, I, and I probably watch, I probably, in fairness, I probably watch 50 Laker games a year. Yeah. And how yeah. many times uh, do the Lakers play every year? 80, 82. Yeah, 81, 82, yeah, 82 times. I probably watch, you know, 16 games of basketball a week. Yeah, 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 compared yeah. to well, 16 NFL games a year yeah. in so. a season so. yeah. and, and, and as a fan it probably would make it quite easy that you, you'd be able to watch you know, 14, game. 15 games and still have an, have an understanding of where the season is at and yeah. where they go yeah. where in the NBA you can't do that you have to watch 15 yeah. plus games if you miss so a week in the NBA you could you it's know, a lifetime you yeah. a lot. Yeah. well you, I mean, in a week they play three games you know yeah. so yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a major chunk to miss out on so uh, what was your favourite moment of the Super Bowl Nathan uh I would have to say Tom Brady's reaction, to be honest. Like, for a guy, that's his fourth Super Bowl. He's 36, I think. Yep. And obviously got, like, one of the... A lot of people are now saying he has put himself in the position to be named, you know, greatest quarterback of all time. Is he the greatest quarterback of all time? Uh, it's tough. On paper, he's pretty... Like, he's comparable to every other. If you compare him to Manning and... Uh, John Elway, all those kind of guys. He's he's right there. What about some of the old school quarterbacks? Yeah, I think if you say like John Elway, Montana, yeah. he, he's right there in terms of he's got the consistent success. I don't think the Patriots have ever really sucked while he's been there. Yeah, sure. He's had like, he potentially, sh- he should have had five Super Bowls if it wasn't for that di- David Tyree catch. And like, he's had the, one of the, the last perfect season in NFL like the only seven, uh, 16 game perfect season in NFL history. Like, he's got a pretty incredible resume. And it's, it's another one of those things where he's come at the same time as Manning, where it's kind of the Federer and Nadal thing, where it's like they've just been pushing each other. Yeah. The records, they keep breaking each other's records. It's just like an incredible time for quarterbacks in NFL. Yeah. That competition is, um, that's, that's what makes, you know, entire leagues and players and, and yeah. things develop at, at such a high rate. And they haven't even played each other. I think they've played like seven or eight times in their career because, yeah. uh, like, it's just because of the structure of yeah. the, the NFL. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting. I just I just saw the fight that they had at the end of the game. Yeah, yeah. It, that is the most pussiest looking fight <laughs> I've ever seen. And, uh, they're basically yeah, in, like that sums up most NFL other. fights. <laughs> <laughs> to yeah. be to be fair, if I could be in a fight with pads and a helmet, I'd call Mark Cannon right now. <laughs> you know, I'd call, I'd, I'd call the juggernaut out myself. I'd be like, "Yo, <laughs> Super Samoan." <laughs> You know, there was one guy who had the helmet ripped off, and I said, "He like, oh, I ran away." He's like, yeah. oh, shit. "That's what I got too real for." I lost my helmet. Ah, oh, it's like a real fight. It's a sporting <laughs> lockdown, everybody. We're reviewing the Super Bowl, but coming up in a little bit, we're going to talk a little bit of the NRL nines, the Wellington Sevens. We're going to talk some rugby. We're going to talk some cricket. Cricket World Cup starting next week. It is all here. We hope you're having a good afternoon, and you're tuning in, and you're not doing too much. Don't watch too much porn at home. This is a sporting lockdown. This is ASAP Ferg right here. The Sporting Lockdown Sunday, it's Lunas. I got five on it before we had some ASAP Ferg. And you're with the Sporting Lockdown crew, Dan, JB, Nate the White Guy, and of course the Red Scarf himself. Red Scarf, you're not really a massive sports fan outside of combat sports. However, tell us about some sports that you like. Uh, anything with violence, really. Um, I do like any, any sort of contact sport, rugby league. Not, not a huge fan of rugby and league, but you know, I, I like watching guys getting smashed so that's pretty cool um i sports i can't stand 
is like racing sports. The one where it's just that Motorsport. one track. Yeah, 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 just that one track. Though. NASCAR. Like I don't, yeah, yeah NASCAR. You know, and, they, and it's like, what, 500 laps or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indy 500. NASCAR is boring as shit to watch. Yeah, yeah. yeah people watch it for yeah. the crashes. For, for Yo, me, yeah. And Indy Racing League. Like the IRL, Scott Dixon, you know, Kiwi guy doing big things. He is. The IRL is fucking boring. They too. have started doing proper, like, regular circuits in that now like so it's like half and half now I think yeah, yeah really. still, still full boring though um, Formula uh, 1 I can watch a bit of Formula 1 um, yeah it's not bad it's not, not a major should watch Formula 1 I know because there's a little bit more excitement involved I think yeah. the build up and all that I, sort of shit I really enjoy watching Supercross the, of, of any oh, racing yeah. sport that's by far my favourite and like freestyle motocross that's kind of the same thing like really yeah. exciting to watch yeah. that's yeah. another yeah. real white thing dude to do like, yeah. like, be into like motorcycles hey man let's yeah. go race the bikes y'all hey, 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 hey. I watch them uh, race on motorbikes me and my sister <laughs> <laughs> oh wow <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're crossing over all sorts of things, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like barriers yeah. um, you know I don't get motorsports either like I, 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 I'll watch V8 supercars and generally it's because I, I get into to watch the Kiwis that are in it yep. but yeah, yeah. Uh, outside of that I find and indie wrestling boring I cannot watch NASCAR NASCAR is a waste of time in my view um, do you like X Games at all? Anything in X Games? Like any of those kind of... No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get into X Games, like, no. no. Yeah, no. I flick the channel when that's on. Maybe that's a white guy thing as well. It is. It, I it, really, yeah. I like, like, I would watch X Games over almost anything. Unless you're Pharrell, and let's be honest, Pharrell is the whitest person <laughs> in the history. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Him and Lionel Richie. And then... Yeah. So, <laughs> and Drake. And, and Drake. But Drake, the, you know, Drake's Canadian. That don't count. Yeah. You know? I, um, I'll, I'll chime in and say that I, I do watch a bit of um, Red Bull TV from time to time. Yeah. Oh. Good stuff. Yeah, I, I enjoy... Um, well, your name's John Barry. If you like so watching yeah. people... <laughs> if you enjoy watching people get smashed, X Games is pretty good for that. Like, people get destroyed in that. I, yeah. think, I think people get drunk at, like, cricket games because everyone looks pretty drunk. In the, yo, hey. yeah. yo, <laughs> yo, yo. the best part I get drunk <laughs> at cricket. Like, seriously. And you watch all these guys at the cricket at the moment. You're going to see everybody wearing those two shirts to try to take the one-hand catch. Yeah. And what, do you, how much do you want? A hundred thousand? No, it's a million this no, year. No, it's a million. No, no, it's, oh, no I think it's a million. I think the it's, it's like cool. accumulated prize pool is a million dollars. Right, okay. But if you catch the ball, if you wear the two shirt, the new two shirt, your one hand. with the lanyard, and you catch the ball with one hand on the full, you win a hundred thousand dollars. They gave away two last year. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's great. Could have been more. So you're watching all these drunk dudes getting like, like fucked up. <laughs> and they're running around. And they're like, ah, and they're like, <laughs> tripping over each other. With a bear in their hands at yeah. all time. Every yeah, single yeah, yeah. guy has a bear in their hand, like trying to catch. It's so bad. It's fucking crazy. Do you do win more money if you? You got a bear in your hand as well. You should, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, you person. catch it with a tui in your hand. It's like extra promotion. Yeah, I think you should. I think you should. Extra promotion. He's like, <laughs> bring, bring more revenue. <laughs> <laughs> Increase the economy. What? Fuck. Catch the guy there. Man, just catch the ball. <laughs> go catch a million, a thousand, hundred thousand dollars, yeah. and go get or, some strippers. Or wait for him outside by the toilets. That's where all the islanders will be. What I would do. <laughs> so here's what I do. I'd get like a crew of like maybe. 30 of my biggest Islander mates and we go cordon off the area like straight <laughs> yeah. like straight with it I hit the ball straight and like yo and I'll be like they're the only guy there and I'm like you're in because I'd give it the, it'd be a cut they'd be like yo I'll give you 5G yo yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I catch a ball I'll give you it's 5G. a good split I think so. Yeah. Not actually, no, not really. If I do the math, thirty times five thousand, that doesn't work out at all. <laughs> I'm paying money to win money. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. See, I, I would get thirty Indians, and then I'd be like, "Hey, one of you guys is gonna catch it because you're." <laughs> According to your race, you should be good at this shit. Well, and well, actually, funny just, enough, the subcontinent cricket players are the worst fielders in the, in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're, they're the worst. Oh, wow. So the best, what are they good at? Um, they're good at batting batting, and bowling. They're good at, Very good at hand, batting hand and bowling. Hand-eye coordination. Hand-eye coordination with the bat and the bowling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but that's about but it. Not like, with the ball. Kiwis and, and Aussies are traditionally the best fielders. How many... Staffers. And let's be yeah. honest. Dirty how, roads. How many, how, many Indian, how many Indian dudes do you see coming to the club on a Saturday night being like, yo, that dude's swag ass. He must catch a ball really well. You know, true. <laughs> How do you judge no. someone's ball catching ability though? By like, whoa, well, whoa. Nate, you look like you catch a few balls. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, who was that directed at? Nate. Ah, yeah. Ben was like, was that me? <laughs> yeah. Did he supply some did he ice to the moon. <laughs> hey, quick WWE breakdown. What happened in the last seven days? Because it's been a pretty big week since the Royal Rumble. Yes, it has, and uh, to be honest, I actually haven't seen oh, wrestling this I thought week. this was just shit. You was like, I thought wrestling was your bang. You're the wrestling correspondent. They're, they're building up to the fast lane, uh, which is the next pay per view. What a dumb fucking name it's, for it's a pay per view. Stink name. And fast lane. That's a dumb name. Yeah, because they got rid of uh, Elimination Chamber, which was actually a real mm. badass. Yeah, it was idea. a good concept. I think Eric Bishop. Bishop. Eric Bishop. Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Bishop. 
he's the other guy, but Eric Bischoff. Well, <laughs> Eric <laughs> Bischoff is Eric Bischoff. I know Eric yeah, yeah, Bischoff. Yeah. That's his, yeah, that's the cleaner. Anyway, um, he, 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 he came up with, um, yeah, he came up with uh, Elimination Chamber. So sure. it's pretty sad that the, they've kind of scrapped their whole idea now. I and I, I get why they do month to month pay per views, but all these like these in between pay per views, which aren't the, like what was once before the, the traditional big four, the big, yeah, the yeah, big four, the WWE ones, they, right. they fucking just they're just terrible, you know. I I think they need to cut down the number of pay per views there, but they won't because it's all about revenue. Yeah. yeah. Um, although I, I really I really enjoy watching some of the NXT pay per view stuff that they do on the WWE network. Yeah, yeah, and that's the one that Triple H actually runs. Eh? Yeah, yeah. So he runs he runs it himself there, and because he, he runs a performance center and NXT and all that sort of thing. Yeah, and, that, and, and um, that's fucking good. Yeah, because uh, Steve Austin did a podcast with uh, Triple H. I'm sorry, I, I I don't believe it's a real podcast unless unless it's if it's in a WWE studio. Do you think it's been? It's bullshit, man. Does, does uh, Austin get to like swear and like talk shit on it, or no, no, it's it's different to his podcast. Uh, no, sorry, let me get this right. It's the same platform and the same present presented podcast as what he did on on um, podcast one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it isn't the same because he's he's yeah. restricted on what he can say and can't so do. So he's a mouthpiece on the WWE. Yeah, oh, pretty much. So okay, it, yeah, this yeah. Is, it's another example of a wrestler selling out. Like you'd never expect yeah, to see Jericho yeah. moving his podcast over to WWE Network and stop the swearing and stop the vulgarity, yeah, yeah, yeah. stop yeah. talking about music and other things outside of wrestling. Yeah. Um, you, gotcha. I, could, I could picture Jim Ross doing it, and you're talking about the three biggest wrestling podcasts. I think bigger than Goldberg. I think Goldberg still gets something like um, I don't know half a million um, listens a week. Or download something like that, but nothing compared to the Austin, um, JR, and Chris Jericho podcast, which are huge. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the main event for Fastlane is Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan. Uh, yeah. The winner will. You can see what's happening here. Eh? Yeah, yeah, the, the yeah. backlash of, um, of of the fans. Of the fans. And, and there's a lot of blog stuff at the moment. They're talking about about how the fans. Uh, the, the, you, so you had the attitude era, you had the the, the, the superhero era. They're calling this era now um, the reality, reality era of yeah. pro wrestling because of the impact that the fans are having on what happens in the storylines, what happens in the action. Yeah. Because, and and let's be honest here, if you're Triple H or Vince McMahon, you, you that's your money, that's your dollar right there. So you're going to do what the fan wants. It's like you're in a bar. Okay, you're yeah, going to yeah. do what you need to do to get people in the bar. And same thing, yeah. they're going to make more money if they keep the fans happy. They know that they got to dangle the carrot, and they know they've got to try and just hold it out as long as they can to get their big payday at the end. But I think it's pretty obvious to see that Daniel Bryan is going to get given the the, the most massive superhero. Like that, I, I read, I was reading a um, I was reading a blog the other day about how they're making Daniel Bryan look. Ten times more superhero strength than John Cena. Yeah, yeah. You the, have to look um, what it'll go through to come back. And but in fairness, they did bury him at the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Well, I mean, just on the SmackDown that just uh, was the other day, he the show ends with him beating everyone. I think Kane and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try and jump him in. And so now he's going to beat Roman Reigns. Mm. He's going to beat Roman Reigns at Fastlane, and he's going to go on to beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Wow. So it's pretty crazy. Oh. So, well, see, so the the thing with that is that. Uh, Daniel Bryan, his, in terms of his injuries, how, how serious do you think his injuries have affected his actual wrestling from prior well, what to it, what it has done is he's lost a lot of weight, so he's not carrying as much bulk as what he was before. Yeah. But which actually doesn't bother me because he didn't look that good with a whole lot of bulk on his chest and arms and stuff. His frame he's is quite small. His eh? frame is not made. He's like five eleven, I think. So his frame yeah. is not made to be a massive, massive pro wrestler. And they did the same. It's like CM Punk. When they put CM Punk and they got CM Punk um, on, on the, probably on the PEDs and get him like working yeah. out and, and fucking, he, he looked horrible. His body looked horrible, you know? But yeah. then he became a vegetarian, leaned up heaps and got, and got a lot of his athleticism back and made him more better, better to watch. And yeah. that CM Punk versus Brock Lesnar match was a fucking good match. Yeah. So, I'm thinking that Daniel Bryan beating Brock Lesnar in a, in, a, in a fixed professional wrestling match isn't that far of a stretch because it'll be a great, it'll be a good fight. You know that, you know that Daniel Bryan is going to carry Brock Lesnar through that match. Yeah. Brock Lesnar is not the professional wrestler that he was in 2001. Oh, really? He's not even close to being the professional wrestler that he was. So, mm. do you think though that if I, if I was WWE, 
the way I'd look at it is that is Daniel Bryan going to get injured again and sidelined any longer, like, especially with the injuries he's had? But this was those he's were had his some very serious. That was his first major injuries he's ever had in his career. Didn't, didn't he have two neck injuries? Yeah, but then not quite like this though. Not what he had last year. And they're all real injuries. They're, yeah, legitimate injuries. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, uh, he had he had a shoulder injury and a neck injury mm-hmm. is, is basically what happened, and it was a build up of a whole lot of injuries over time that he didn't get oh, seen yeah. to, and yeah. then he won. So he has the biggest. Well, probably, I mean, you think about this, WrestleMania 30 was the biggest WrestleMania I think that they've had since WrestleMania 3. And he was the, he was the, he was the centerpiece of it. Wow. And oh, it, yes, and you, But you know what? Had you ever seen a crowd react? I've never, like, I grew up in the Hogan era. I grew up in the Warrior era. I grew up in the 80s era of professional wrestling when you believed that professional wrestling was real. Yeah. You believed yeah, 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 yeah. that, you believed that that was the greatest thing. You fucking just, ah! You went out of your mind yeah. when you saw Hulk Hogan come out. Did you ever do that? Yeah, I did it right now. Oh, I did it right now. It is, I did it right now. It's yeah. the greatest feeling. I was in love with wrestling back in the day. It but was the I've best. never seen a reaction like what the, what these people do for Daniel Bryan. And it's and, 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 and it's based out of the fact that wrestling fans are smart now. So they're, obviously they're smart to the game. They know, they know that everything's fixed. But they're smart to what the work that some of these wrestlers have done to get to where they are. So there's a lot of people talking about the, the Brian Danielson matches with um, um, Tyler Black, which is Seth Rollins and Ring yeah, of yeah. Honor and things like that. So they know about the work that Daniel Bryan's... They've seen... Because Daniel... Here's the thing that people don't, don't, know, don't know, and I don't know if you know this, JB, is that Daniel Bryan is a legitimate tough guy. Yeah. Okay. So he competed in what they call shoot fights, yeah, which yeah. is basically pro wrestling fights where they are where they are, the the result is determined only if you can survive getting there. So they do them in Japan a lot of the time because yeah. obviously everyone knows professional wrestling is fake, but in Japan they sell it by making well you're going to be the winner, but if you get there, if you don't win, if you are unconscious during that fight and yeah. you cannot win, you don't deserve to win. So Daniel Bryan has done a lot of these fights where it's like full-on um, uh, uh, mixed martial arts type sort of wow. um, fights. And you can see a lot of them on YouTube. And they don't pull punches? No, they're fucking, they're, they are ruthless as hell. Nice. So Daniel Bryan's like kicking this Russian dude in the head like five times. And it's a, a, a reason, and they're putting like legitimate holds on each other and, on each other and things like that. So, yeah. And the only thing that's fixed about it is the result. But you got it, part of, part of the, the, the um, the pride of winning is being able to go through that punishment to, to get there, yeah. to survive yeah. it, you know, and that sort of thing. So, isn't hmm. um, uh, bad? Oh, not bad. It's a bad news, Barrett. Yep, it is a new name. Um, isn't he a bare knuckle fighter, winner, or some shit like that as well? Nah, no, nah, that was um, nah, was that just uh, no, nah, that was William Regal. So William William Regal. Um, the old school William Wade, Regal. No, old Wade school, Barrett. Yeah, well, yeah, Wade Barrett. Barrett. But old school William Regal. I mean, yeah. Wade Barrett might be, but the old school William Regal was a bare knuckle fighter. Used to fight on the ports in Liverpool. Yeah. Before he became a professional wrestler, so I, I don't know. Wade Barrett might be, but I'm, I know, I know. Um, Legitimate, and you remember a lot of the fighting, a lot of these guys that used to do like in the seventies and eighties and stuff. Before they got to the big leagues, it was them having legitimate fights and legitimate uh, bare knuckle contests yeah. and things like that. Because to be a professional wrestler back then, it wasn't about necessarily being an athlete. It was about being a legitimate like tough guy. Because they knew that people thought that professional wrestling was fake. If they're at a bar, they're going to get confronted by these guys, and they're going to have to be able to defend themselves and be able to do it properly. And that was it. So you had guys like you look at all these wrestlers. They had like Bad News Brown. Um, the Dino Bravos. These yeah. guys were legitimate bad. You know, Dino Bravo was smuggling cigarettes into the United States, and he got he, <laughs> he got killed point blank, shot point blank range in the head. Wow. He got like, he wow. got killed by the Canadian mafia. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Oh. You know, so and because like wrestlers, so these wrestlers back then they were involved in organized crime. They were legitimate fucking bodyguards. They were legitimate hard men. You know, was that your input? Yeah. Was that, like, I haven't yeah. watched wrestling for like ten years, so I have no idea. But I'm, I am I'm the same boat. But I, I can still talk about I, it. I appreciate when it's on, I'll watch it, and I like. I find it really cool to watch. Like, the athleticism's out of the world. Like, the skills and everything is, like, real. Like, the results are fixed, and the fights are fixed and all that. But, but their like, ability and their athleticism yeah, is real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what and, I've always been able to appreciate about it, though. And, like, you've got to, you've got to train to know how to hurt someone, to know how to not hurt them. Like, well, you've well, got to learn how to do everything properly. So professional you know wrestling it. is about looking after the other guy, and it's about yeah. being able to... It's about the brotherhood and all that sort of stuff, so... Yeah, I mean, that's now, but back then, that's not what it was about. It was about them actually proving themselves to be real tough guys, real strong men, and yeah. all that sort of thing. So, it'd be interesting to see what happens with the Daniel Bryan Brock Lesnar thing. We, all, we already all know Brock Lesnar is a legitimate bad, bad man. Um, I, I tell you what, it's a shame. It's a shame um, Kurt Angle never got to fight mixed martial arts. 
Um, yeah, yeah, with his wrestling pedigree. So yeah, yeah. the Olympic UFC gold medalist, eh? Yeah. Olympic gold medalist, yeah, Olympic gold medalist, <laughs> um, legitimate, legitimate member of um, uh, Team Foxcatcher. So, so Team Foxcatcher with with uh, um, uh, they've just put a movie out about them um, with the brothers. Ah, oh, the, the American the American Olympic wrestling brothers. I'm I'm sorry, guys, but they they were um, he ended up killing one of them, um, Mark. Well, Kurt Angle oh. ended up killing one of them. No, no, no. Kurt Angle was in their crew, so Kurt Angle oh, was in okay, like a. Yeah, so yeah. you think of the Black Zillions now? Yeah. This was like the the. Are the talking pro- about the Schultz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark Schultz, Mark and Dave Schultz. So Mark and Dave Schultz were, were American um, um, wrestlers. So Dave, uh, sorry, Mark Schultz competed in the UFC. Uh, one of the Schultz brothers competed in the UFC as well. Um, but Kurt Angle was a member of Team Foxcatcher. It was basically like a farm of American um, uh, freestyle wrestlers who were yeah. trained for the Olympic Games and that sort of thing. And like you were brought up from a young age and that sort of thing. And the guy who who, um, who funded it actually went crazy and killed Mark Schultz or Dave Schultz. Wow. Oh, Dave shit. Schultz. Dave Schultz. Shit. I have yeah, to look this up. John Dupont. Yeah, John Dupont. There's a movie just been made where Steve Carell plays John Dupont and uh, Tanim Chaining plays Mark Schultz and Mark right, Ruffalo yeah. plays Dave Schultz. And apparently it's really, really good. I actually thought it was a uh, rugby movie when I saw the, the, the look, the look of the poster. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's a very interesting movie. And Mark, Sh- um, one of the Schultz brothers actually is a UFC fighter. But Kurt Angle, funny enough, got offered a UFC contract in 1998. Right. Um, but the money back then just wasn't the same as the money no, now. No. So. And certainly not anywhere near the money in wrestling at the time. At the time, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You know? didn't, and didn't Kurt Angle go, he did like, obviously, legit wrestling in the Olympics and stuff, and then went WWE. Didn't he go back to legit wrestling? No, no, no. So, when he was older? So, so Kurt Angle's career progressed from WWE, then he went to ECW. So Kurt Angle first appeared on ECW television, um, but didn't like the content of the show with the violence okay. and the sexual yeah, you know, the, and things the, like that. Yeah, it was quite sexist. Yeah. And so he, he decided it wasn't for him, and then he signed a deal with WWE. Um, but they, and they say that Kurt Angle uh, legitimately would have been would have made a great. He was he was legitimately probably the best wrestler in the world at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And with his his training and his body type and his ability to take punishment and his intensity, man. Yeah, they reckon that he would have been a top MMA fighter, um, and he would have had no problems uh, learning uh, jujitsu and yeah. striking as well. He was a good size as well. And for that era as well, he would have been an, a beast. Yeah. You know, because yeah, yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. I, like the era, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in, on the next show, but. You had the like from nineteen the mid nineteen nineties to mid two thousands. You know, we are talking like the um, the Tito Ortiz, Randy Couture era. Yeah. Yeah. Like these guys are these guys are solid fighters, but they're not quite the the technicians that you have now. Well, Randy yeah. in MMA. Randy was would have been up in that sort of echelon, but not at the top like um like Kurt. Like because, you, like if you took Randy Couture in his prime, yeah. as a light heavyweight, and you put him against John Jones, what's happening there? Oh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm talking, yeah, for sure. The, John Jones would probably waste him. He'd probably take him down and wrestle him, wrestle him around. Um, like Chuck, imagine, can you, could you even imagine Chuck Liddell, um, even, you, I mean, would Chuck Liddell ever be able to beat uh, DC, say, for instance? Well, maybe. You know, Chuck Liddell has a bomb. Yeah. And uh, his chin He's got that fighter's, fighter's chance. Yeah. yeah, and his chin, you know, his striking's great. He, um, he was very unconventional, like some of the training methods he had, throwing strikes from all sorts of weird angles, etc. But over, th- over three or five rounds, he, he, and, and DC take him down and out-wrestle him and out-point him. Theoretically. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. And I'm just saying, you know, so a guy like Kurt Angle in that era of MMA would have been, they, they say that he'd been just absolutely amazing. Well, yeah, Kurt Angle would have been at his athletic prime as well, where um, Randy Couture was past his athletic yeah. prime. Have you ever heard, have you ever heard the story of um, of Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning taking down um, Brock Lesnar on multiple occasions on a plane flight? To the yeah, I, trans- I know that trans- story. Trans- plane flight? That was like two thousand ish, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. ninety eight, two thousand. So Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar gets drunk and he's on the flight and he's yeah. basically. Talking, telling everyone like how none of them can take him and all that sort of thing. I think it was about 2001, something like that. And no one can take him. He's, he's, you know, he's a real athlete compared to all these fake athletes. You know, he's a legitimate fighter, a legitimate tough man, all that sort of thing. And causing a little bit of a stir. And nobody wanted to confront him about it, except Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning gets up and goes, because Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning, of course, was an NCAA wrestler too, out of the uh, University of Minnesota. So we're talking about the same sort of pedigree. Kurt Henning gets up and goes, yeah, I'll, I'll take you. So they. They get in there, and he takes uh, Brock Lesnar down three consecutive times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, three consecutive times. I love, I love Kurt Henning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, rest in peace. Good man. For I sure. Reckon he was a top Does entertainer. Does his son wrestle now? Yeah, right. Curtis yeah, Axel. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, right. he's a bit average. 
Yeah. A bit average. I like his shirt, though. Better than perfect. As far, as <laughs> Who would you say is one of the best uh, sons of wrestlers that carried on in, in the business? Oh, The Rock. The Rock? The Rock's yeah, probably true. up there. Randy Gold Orton. Dust. Randy Orton. Um, Gold Dust. Yeah, Gold Dust. I tell you, I, I, Gold, Gold Dust, the current run Gold Dust is on yeah, is yeah. incredible. Yeah. Really good. Um, He's the son of Dusty Rhodes, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. if I was the son of Dusty Rhodes, I probably could have become a professional wrestler and, 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 and done that. <laughs> I think the story angle with Goldust as well is that they're looking at um, him finishing up at WrestleMania yeah. and they're looking to do a breakup between old now, him, yeah? and, him and Cody. But he looks really good. Like, you can be like, in the mid-90s Goldust, when he was in, like, in his main run, his he, was, he was pretty yeah. pudgy yeah, and yeah, overweightness. Yeah, yeah. He is slim and he looks fantastic, yeah. you know? so Nice. I, I actually yeah. used to love Goldust. I thought he was an awesome wrestler. He knows how to work and stuff and um, he had a real interesting backstory. Yeah, he because um, but what back in the back before Goldust used to look like a more of a drag, but now his um his persona is more like, like a menace, like, like a phantom menace type yeah, type yeah, sort of yeah, character. The yeah, painting looks a little bit more cooler, not so yeah gay. <laughs> yeah, 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 um, and who, I mean I'm trying to think of other second generation or third generation wrestlers who have gone on to be sort of I, I think oh, like even uh, stars. Oh, what's her name? Ah, uh, God, uh, Jim Neidhart's daughter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Natasha. Na- Natalia. Natalia, that's it. Yeah, Natalia, Natalia Neidhart. Um, yeah. So you got her. You've got um, Rick Flair's daughter who's killing NXT at the moment, Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte. Charlotte, yeah. Oh, so yeah. she's... Um, and, man, uh, Rick, uh, all, three of Rick Flair's kids have wrestled, and the only one that was looking like he was going to be super massive was going to be Reed Flair, who was the youngest son, and because he died of a drug he overdose died, yeah. last oh, wow. year. Yeah, um, that's right. And he, was, he had just been signed to a WWE developmental contract deal. So. Oh, because when I stopped um, watching, I think Rick Flair's oldest son had just got in the business. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Had that crazy persona in WCW. And yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, that was when we first got introduced to Miss Hancock, a.k.a. <laughs> Stacey Kubler. Yeah, yeah. My favorite diva Longest legs of all that woman. Yeah. time. Wow. I, I would trade I would trade my family in for Stacey Keebler. <laughs> Just saying. Hey, so I mean, so far saying is coming up. You can catch out on Skype pay per view here in New Zealand, yep. or you can just book the WWE Network. Works out for be about twelve ninety five a month here in New Zealand. And they're also hinting at a, a Bray Wyatt versus the Undertaker for WrestleMania. Yeah, which, which would be a really, really interesting yeah. sort of fight. I, I just does take a fight at WrestleMania. I can't see him. I can't like, see the yeah. Thing yeah, yeah, but they haven't, they haven't brought him back, you know. And because he was old when I last watched wrestling, which is like a few yeah. years ago now. Yeah. He's, he's now shaved as he's got that. So when you start watching haircut. wrestling, so you watch Recess on Nickelodeon. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, Found a new passion. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's like, oh my god, I'm watching Nickelodeon. <laughs> at least have you guys seen? Real. Have you guys seen iCarly? <laughs> no. <laughs> That wasn't a question. Oh. Was, 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 <laughs> yeah. You've never seen iCarly? No. Nah. You know who iCarly is? No. I, I have seen iCarly. I know who iCarly is. A a wrestler? I, yeah, I've got a niece. No, she makes me watch these little uh, Nickelodeon programs, but Recess was just not one of them. Hey, Cricket World no. Cup starts in, yeah. in six days. And, it'll, oh, yeah. and I'm actually like, for, as, a, as a cricket fan and a cricket tragic, I am fucking looking forward to it. And I think that we have a legitimate opportunity to win the World Cup. Is, is and I don't want to jinx it. Touch wood. We have a legitimate opportunity. We are hitting all cylinders at the moment. Yeah. We are playing at home. We are playing in, in, in surfaces and pitches that will suit um, what we do. It's our game, theoretically. It is, and we, it, is our, it is our cup to lose. Is, so is it one, one day is, right? Yeah, one yep. day is. So 50 over matches. Uh, and yeah. how many teams are playing? Uh, there are 16 teams in the World Cup. Sure. Yeah, but in fairness, there's the ones outside the top six. Don't <laughs> yeah, okay. That's right. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. like I'm really looking forward to that New Zealand Afghanistan match. You know, it's, it's probably less competitive than the FIFA World Cup. It's yeah, it's pretty bad. Some, yeah. some of the teams are pretty rough. Did you know that? Because um, everyone talks about the FIFA World Cup being the biggest sporting event. More people watch the Cricket World Cup final yeah. than the Football World Cup final. Definitely, yeah. yeah. There is wow. more cricket fans There's in the more world. More people in India yeah, than watch, a, a, that's that's right. watch India. the any, yeah. any sport. In theory, cricket is, is probably the most watched sport in the entire world. Global. Because of the subcontinent. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Yeah, so it's huge. I watched an interesting doco on MMA in, in India, and they were saying that that is the biggest roadblock, is the, is the cricket. It's just a monopoly. Honestly, yeah. Were you in India watching it? Or? No, no, sorry. Okay, sorry. I was watching a documentary about MMA in India ah. whilst I was on my couch in Auckland. <laughs> There's MMA in <laughs> India? <laughs> yeah, there is. Um, the UFC <laughs> were going to go over there, but apparently they pulled out. Did you know that Great Carly killed someone? Sorry, professional wrestling. Oh, killed really? someone yeah, in a professional yeah. fight in India. Wow. Yeah, like accidentally, obviously. But wow. yeah, just, just killed What kind guy. of Indian is he? Because he is fucking huge. He's a tall <laughs> ass yeah, one. <laughs> you, like, you, you can generally get smart to Indians and just be safe. Like, I'm good. You know, I can handle... If I he's was getting smart and the great Khali came out of a cab, I'd be like, 
Do you remember? Uh, the, do you remember, so do you remember the great Cali in the whole nine yards? And uh, uh, not the whole, longest yard. No, the longest yard. The longest yeah, yard. Longest so. yard. Yeah, 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 yeah. The whole nine yards of Bruce Willis movie. Scary so. man. Yeah, with Matt Perry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, how yeah, Matt Perry, that Matt, that Matt Perry. I love Matt Perry. I don't know why Matt Perry and David Schwimmer didn't become more famous. <laughs> um, okay, all right. <laughs> well, that brings us to the... I wanted to talk some nines, just very quickly. Nine, seven, sevens this sevens, weekend. Yeah. Hey, the sevens look really empty, eh? It, it was. It looked terrible. Mm. Far. But do you know what, though? I enjoyed the action. I really enjoyed the action. New Zealand won. Who did they play in the final? England. Oh, okay. Manu Samoa looking horrible at the moment. Oh, God. There are some issues. And they've got some players that have come in, like Tim Nanai Williams has, yeah. has made himself now available for a Samoa. Um, so you can go to the Olympics for Samoa and the Rugby World Cup, yeah, I think, yeah. for Samoa. So he's now legitimate uh, available to play for Manu Samoa. But they look terrible this weekend. Yeah. I think, they, 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 I think they, they lost the shield or the bowl or something like that. Yeah. Oh, shit. So they were like in the bottom half of the competition where last season, season before, they were like competing top two teams. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they, they didn't look that great but I enjoyed the action bit of the nines but the nines just looks like it was so much more fun more people yeah I wonder time. if because they were one week apart which I assume is the nines fault because the sevens is always this time like it's been going for years and years so the nines last year was two weeks later because it was on the same weekend as Rapture as yep. Eminem but because of the Cricket World Cup they wouldn't get access to Eden Park so the oh, compromise okay. was right. that they would move the nines earlier they really um, should have gone earlier than they did yeah like, but one week is just that's why the sevens was empty no nah, se- I'll tell you what I think no. the sevens are empty the sevens are empty because everyone in Auckland goes to the sevens yeah, yeah. and now they don't Aucklanders don't need to travel to Wellington yeah. they're you nines can, out you, yeah, you can, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell you how much of an Auckland event it was if you're in Wellington and the sevens are on, it is pumping. You know, I'm um, right through Manor's Moor, Courtney Place is absolutely heaving. Yeah. In Auckland, it was like a normal Saturday night. Yeah. Because everybody that was here yeah. were Aucklanders. There was no night. huge yeah, influx yeah. of, of uh, tourists yeah, in the area, right. you know. So, so I think that's, that was probably a big part of it as well. Sorry, Jamie, you had something to say? No, no, that was it. I, I, I just agreed with you that there was no big influx of... Um, you agreed with me? Yeah. Thank you. I like that. Got to have Who won the nines again? Uh, it was won by no 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 Rabbitohs Rabbitohs won Rabbitohs won they beat Cronulla Sharks in overtime what happened to the Warriors man oh fuck the The same thing how many years are people going to ask that although I'm I think can I tell you what we should do we should get $25 each and put it on the Warriors to win the NRL $100 um, I I wonder what it's actually paying out would be quite interesting we should put it on um, on sportsbeat.com.au and and I mean to win like just the regular NRL not the to win the NRL. Oh, okay. The NRL. When does that start? A couple of weeks? Yeah, I think we'd have to put the bet on this week. Yeah. And I think yeah. it would be a good bet. And it also would give us a reason to tie into it. Because let's have, let, me, let me just quickly just have a look at what the odds what the odds are. On the tab.co.nz, for all of you people that want to get fiendish and, and degenerative and gamble like I do. Because spend, I am, I am spend, a, all, spend your nappy money? I am an absolute... <laughs> I'm a degen. Honestly, if I had kids, I would be like struggling to feed them because <laughs> I am a gambling de. Jen. See, I like gambling as like a once in a while sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Go to the I've never horses. done TAB before. I've only ever done like bets with mates. No, mate. Oh, mate. 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 mate I, you know, though, with your, with your insight into American sports, there's a Bro. lot of money to be made on the, yeah. on the NBA. <laughs> a guy like you. You can be a, a fast lane. In the US, they, they <laughs> have like one week um, leagues, like one week fantasy leagues. Yeah. And, you know, they create millionaires every year. Wow. Well, I've always wanted to do fantasy basketball. I kind of wanted to get into it this year. I just couldn't find like a group of people to do it with without paying heaps of money and doing it online. So the, okay, yeah. so the Warriors are paying ten dollars. That means that the Warriors win would win a thousand dollars. Who's the favourites? Uh, the favourites are the South Sydney Rabbitohs, paying five fifty. The Warriors are paying ten dollars to win the NRL. It's a good bet. I'm telling you now. I was listening to a mate because they've they've got um, uh, Ryan Hoffman has been bought by the Warriors from the Melbourne Storm, um, and he is probably the best uh, back rower in the NRL. So the, the, the things are starting to click right for the Warriors, I believe. So honestly, $25 each, that could be us. We could do that, and we could make some serious money. It is the lockdown, the sporting <laughs> lockdown. dollars <laughs> That's what it's Well, is it $1,000? You can buy a lot with $250. Yeah, like, like $1,000 gets split up four ways. It's $250. <laughs> Fuck you guys. Nate's real practical. Yeah. Like, yeah. He can buy a lot with $250, guys. He's, to like, kill you. he's yeah. like, yeah. like, honestly, we could buy water, put it into our basement in case there's an earthquake. <laughs> we could buy like $250 worth of petrol and sell it in like 10 years. White people. <laughs> we prepare 
white people like Nathan prepare for natural disasters. Doomsday prepper. Yeah. The rest of us, the rest of us, uh, are the robbers. We struggle. <laughs> we're like just going to loot. We're like looting the world. We're like looting the world. It's the sporting lockdown. We're going to be back with sport and board in a little while. Thank you for listening in. It's the sporting lockdown. Finishing up, JB, Itzy Red Scarf, Nate the White Guy. Yo. I'm Dan. We'll be back with sport and board in a second. This is Snoop Dogg right here on the Sports Fan Network.